This is continuing the function section, lesson 5, return. It says using console log as a result of a function isn't the best use of a function. The purpose of a function is to take some input, perform some task on that input, then return a result. To return a result, we can use the return keyword. Take a look at our function from the last exercise, now rewritten slightly. So we have a function, get remainder, takes in number 1, and number 2, it will return number 1 divided by number 2. So the remainder of that. When we console.log, get remainder, and we pass in 365 and 27, it will output 14. So instead of using console log inside of the get remainder function, we use the return keyword. Return will take the result of the math operation and give it back to whatever calls it. On the last line, we called the get remainder function inside of a console.log statement, which outputted the result of 14. This code achieved the same output as before, however, now our code is better. Why? If we wanted to use the get remainder function in another place in our program, we could without printing the result to the console. Using return is generally a best practice when writing functions as it makes your code more maintainable and flexible. So instructions. First, it says, now that we have the pizza orders, you want to add them up to find the cost of the pizzas for the check. Let's imagine that each pizza is $7.50, no matter the topping and crust type. We will need to do three things to write this in JavaScript. Create a variable to hold the number of pizzas ordered. Whenever a pizza is ordered, add 1 to the number of pizzas ordered. And take the total number of pizzas and multiply them by 7, since each pizza is $7.50. So begin by creating a variable named order count set equal to zero at the top of your code. So we can go here to the top of our code and create var order count and initialize it to zero. Next, inside the take order function, set order count equal to order count plus one so that each time the take order function runs, one is added to the order count. So it doesn't say where to put it, well we could just put it at the end. And we're going to take order count, which at the moment is zero. We're going to assign to it order count plus one. So what this is doing is every time this function runs and it's called, it's going to increment order count by one. So it starts off as zero, but the first time it's called, it runs this function and order count gets updated to being one. Second time it's called, same thing except now it goes from being 1 to adding one more and then it becomes 2. Then the third time it's called, same thing happens and order count becomes 3. So it keeps track of how many times we've ran this take order function. 3. Now it's time to calculate the subtotal of pizzas. This is the perfect job for a function. Declare a function named get subtotal that has one parameter named item count. So we can do this here under our already existing function and create a new one. Get sub total, which takes in a parameter item count. Okay. Inside of the get subtotal functions block, use return to output the item count multiplied by 7.5. So here we would do item count multiplied by 7.5. Make sure to put return okay next on the last line of your program after the take order function calls call it a get subtotal function inside a console log statement so we go here console.log and we want to call get subtotal get subtotal has a parameter that represents the amount of items ordered pass in the order count as an argument when making the function call. So if we run this, it says nice work. Now you can see the orders taken and how much it cost. Next, let's calculate the tax and the full total. Click next to continue. So just to reiterate what happened here, each time take order is called, it runs this first function take order, which inside has order count, which every time take order is called will increment our order count variable which starts off as zero so after three times being called order count becomes three down here when we console.log get subtotal 
it runs that function get subtotal which is going to take in item count so when this runs it runs this part of the code which will take item count which in this instant we passed in order count which is going to be this updated number of three and it's going to pass three into here and it will return three times 750 so that's where we get 2250 and that is it for this lesson on the return statement